Welcome to this brief tutorial for Silverfast 9 AI Studio and the Plastic Optic Film Series. You'll see me using Silverfast 9 AI Studio, our flagship product for scanners. And if you're on another version, or for example, the entry version SE or SE Plus, and would like to follow along, here's a little trick for you. This is the welcome screen of Silverfast 9 up here. And as a scanner, we have to connect it to Plastic Optic Film 8200i. The version that I am currently showing here is Silverfast SE as the full version. But you can access the demo version of SE Plus and AI Studio directly from within your SE version or SE Plus version. So if you click here to the Silverfast AI Studio demo button, then click start, you'll be informed that there's 25 days remaining. Usually for the full demo, it's 30 days and that you will have watermarks in your final scans, but you can follow along to everything that I'm showing you here in the tutorial just fine. So just click continue and it'll start up Silverfast AI Studio. The scope of this demonstration will not allow me to dive into every single available setting, slider, and preferences available. But feel free to post your questions below in the comments if you'd like us to cover a specific topic in one of our future episodes here on our channel, please let us know. Okay, here on the left side we have the control dock. It lets us choose the scan mode. Available is here only a tr transparency mode because we're using a film scanner. Next to it, we can select the material we wish to scan. The available options here are positive for regular E6 slides. Then of course there's the Kodachrome mode because they're very particular to scan and the negative mode. In this episode, we'll cover the positive slides. Next to it is the setting for the color depth. Silverfast offers a wide range of color depths, but it's important to know it always captures 48-bit RGB data from the scanner for internal processing. If the input and the output color depth are not the same, it means Silverfast uses the full 48-bit for internal processing and once finished and ready to save, the color depth will be reduced to 24-bit. Raw here are raw data formats, meaning the full 48-bit RGB data is captured during the scan and no internal processing is applied to the images. So if we choose 48-bit HDR raw here, the tools up here and here will be disabled. But we'll switch back to 48 to 24 bit. Before we move on to the frame settings here, let's perform a quick pre scan. The scanning concept in Silverfast is based on frames. Or actually, for the plastic optic film series, it will be one frame 99.9% .9 of the time. The preview area for a flatbed scanner can contain multiple scan frames. Each one will have its own individual settings. Everything inside the frame will be saved in the final file and everything inside the frame will determine the area of application of our tools and filters, as well as the visual representation of our image data, AKA the histogram. For the sake of this demonstration, we will not cover all the different settings here and all the available options. For now, we will cover fine frames. So let's choose fine frames, slide 35 by 23 millimeter, and watch how the frame will automatically find the content of your image. There you go. It adjusted the frame accordingly. You can always change this here by moving the cursor over the edge of the frame, for example, and adjusting it. Or if you move down here over the half circle angle here, you can grab the frame and you can rotate it. 
we can go back here again, go to fine frames, slide 35 by 23 millimeter. Further down in the control dock, we have our static dialogues. For example, the scan dimensions dialog. These are always displayed because they're necessary for each scan and for easy access. They can be collapsed and extended back by clicking on the little triangle up here. Above our preview area, we have our standard tools. These are the most important scanning and image processing tools, and they're arranged from left to right. If you see a small arrow like this one here, it means if you press and hold, it will open an additional menu. For example, these are the available options for the Silverfast Image Automatic. Now, the special tools like the information tools or the filter tools and scanner controls are located in the vertical toolbar here. They are dependent on the version of Silverfast, the scan mode and the scanner model as well. Active tools like the unsharp masking tool, which is here active, are indicated by a small red dot. So if I go down here to the unsharp masking and would remove that, you can see there's no, it's no more active. Clicking on it again will activate it, indicated by the little red dot here. With this brief overview, of the user interface in Silverfast 9 AI Studio, we're now ready to start scanning. We have set the scan mode to transparency and positive. For the color depth, we will leave it at 48 to 24 bit, assuming we will use the final scan directly. If we were to edit our final scan in a third party software, we could choose 48 bit here, but we'll leave it at 48 to 24 bit for the purpose of this tutorial. Again, this is not supposed to be an in-depth tutorial. You will find plenty of those on our channel. Rather, our goal is to create a brilliant image only by applying the most useful settings in Silverfast. So we'll move further down to the Scan Dimensions widget. Enter a name, and choose TIFF as the file format for our final scan. You can choose TIFF or PSD here. Just note that JPEG won't be available as an option if you have chosen 48-bit as color depth, since JPEG only offers 24-bit color depth. I'll leave the path or directory where to save the final scan set to my pictures folder or click on the folder icon to change it. As my output format, I will choose four by six inches in landscape orientation. Just note that you can choose any of the other options. And if this is set to portrait, just click the little landscape icon. Next under preset, it is already set to 300 ppi as the output resolution. And we're going to leave it like that. But notice how the input slider underneath is changing according to the different settings under preset. As tempting as it may be to move the resolution slider all the way to the right to maximum resolution, we strongly recommend not to. Actually, if you follow the steps I just showed you, you won't have to touch the resolution slider here at all. Believe it or not, but this innocent looking resolution slider is one of the biggest causes of errors when scanning. Either it's set too low or way too high. If you choose the output size and the preset, 
Silverfast will always pick the right input solution. If the temptation is too strong, you may move the slider one step further, but you should never have to move it past 3600 ppi, as indicated by the resolution range and slider color changing to red. We're pretty much done in the Scan Dimensions widget. You can double check your input size, zoom, and output in the Expert Settings section, and we'll adjust the scan frame next over here in the pre-scan area. If the cursor displays a small Mickey Mouse hand, we can adjust the entire scan frame without changing its dimensions. Clicking and holding will drag the scan frame to where we want it. If we move the cursor over the scan frame, but not over this half circle, and not over the corner of the scan frame. We can adjust the size of the scan frame without changing the aspect ratio from the format settings. I will demonstrate this real quick. Notice how the zoom and the input changes in the expert settings. The selected output size will not change but the input resolution slider will adjust accordingly. The output resolution under preset and the 4x6 format will stay the same. If I were to change the scan frame in the corner of the scan frame, the aspect ratio will also be changed, as you can see. Let's hit Command or Control plus Z to undo that last scan frame change. Lastly, you move the cursor over either of the half circles of the scan frame to rotate it freely. Holding down the Shift key while rotating it will rotate the scan frame in 45 degree steps. This is useful if you're unsure if the scan frame is still rotated a couple of degrees. Just hold down the shift key and you're back at zero degrees. So we're going to adjust the scan frame now. And remember, everything inside the frame represents how we want to crop our image for the final scan. Since the aspect ratio of 35 millimeter film is slightly different than our four by six inches output format, we'll be cropping a little bit on the left and right, but that's okay. Let's move up to the standard tools located above our preview. Next to the pre-scan button is the image automatic in Silverfast. With a single click, the image is automatically optimized in terms of highlights, shadows, and midtones. Even color casts are removed automatically. This easy to use image correction can be viewed as a good base optimization for all further processing steps. Before applying the Silverfast Auto Adjust, it can be set to the respective image type or special conditions under which it was taken. Click and hold the little triangle icon, and a list of choices will appear, such as landscape, portrait, and snow. Alt clicking, meaning holding down the Alt key on your keyboard, and clicking the automatic will reset it. We'll use the default automatic, which will optimize highlights, shadows, and midtones You'll notice the two standard tools, Histogram and Gradation, 
now have a little red icon, meaning they're active. The tool widgets have been added to the control dock, but they're still collapsed. Let's expand them by clicking the triangle. The histogram widget shows the visual representation of the input data from the scanner. More precisely, the statistical distribution of tonal values. We can't cover all the bells and whistles in the scope of this tutorial, but you'll find a movie for that on our channel. Just notice the lack of image data in the highlights. Most of the image data coming from the scanner exists between the shadows and midtones. This is actually quite normal for every scanner, and in this case, it might even be related to our slide being a little bit underexposed. But in order to create a brilliant image from our slide, we need to distribute all the tonal values in our image evenly across the tonal range, from the shadows to the midtones and the highlights. As you can see, the Image Automatic in Silverfast has already accomplished this by moving the slider for the highlights from the far right into the histogram, approximately to the point where there's actual image data in the highlights, maybe even a touch too much. But let's use the zoom slider in the histogram of Silverfast on the left to zoom into our histogram. We'll retrieve those highlights in the image by moving the highlight slider a little bit to the right again. That's better. Holding down the Alt key on our keyboard will toggle the histogram. Let me zoom back out again first. We'll toggle the histogram between the display of the input data and the output data. Scrolling down to the widget for gradation, we can see a slight hump in the gradation curve meaning the midtones have been slightly increased by the image automatic. Moving the slider to the left turns the curve the other way and darkens our preview. I will move the curve back to the right until about 10. Slider below will adjust the contrast, moving it to the right increases the contrast and shaping the curve to an S form. To the left will decrease contrast. The picture settings widget is one of the static dialog widgets and provides easy access to adjust midtone, contrast, and saturation. The sliders are synced with their counterpart in the histogram or contrast widget. Moving the midtone slider back to 12 here will also move the midtones to 12 in the histogram and gradation widget. When we're finished fine-tuning the histogram and gradation, we would continue adjusting the global and selective color correction, which I will skip in this tutorial since I'd like to show you how to reproduce the original image as close as possible. But before we hit the scan button, I would like to cover a selection of the most common special tools available in the vertical toolbar. 
clicking on the USM icon for Unsharp masking will open the widget in the control dock, if it isn't open already. If you want to dive in the powerful possibilities of the USM tool in ServerFast, you can click this play button in the USM widget to open a detailed tutorial for the USM dialog in ServerFast. The same play button is available pretty much everywhere in ServerFast and will open a specific tutorial for almost everything in ServerFast. Even a tutorial for the color depth settings is available. We encourage you to click the play button whenever you see one. I will leave the preset on auto sharpness for now and open the high quality zoom real quick to preview the result of the unsharp masking filter. Clicking the check mark can in the header of the unsharp masking widget will toggle the USM on and off to evaluate the effect. The effect of the filter is actually quite subtle with the standard auto sharpness preset. So I will try more auto sharpness and I like it much better. The HQ mode also triggered the navigator widget indicating the zoom range from our HQ preview. Clicking and dragging the yellow square in the navigator will let me navigate over the entire image. Alternatively, I can move my cursor over to the preview area directly, hold down the space key on my keyboard, the cursor will change to a hand icon, so I can move the image around by clicking and dragging. Next, I would like to suggest Silverfast 9 ISRD, the hardware-based dust and scratch removal. Its icon is right underneath the icon for the unsharp masking, and it will open the ISRD widget and will leave it to automatic as well. Feel free to click the play button to watch the detailed tutorial for ISRD. Let's switch back to the normal preview by clicking all the way to the left up here in the ISRD dialog widget. Finally, I will suggest to activate multi-exposure. You can just turn it on or off without any additional settings necessary, but it's an amazing technique to increase the dynamic range of your scanner, meaning it will capture a lot more levels of contrast and is very effective at reducing the noise of the scanner itself, which is always present in every scanner. All right, we're ready to hit the scan button and let Silverfast 9 and the Plastic Optic Film jointly work their magic to create a brilliant image of our original slide. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.